Hey guys, it's Farrell from Europe Labs, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this BB-8 from the new Star Wars movie, for less than $10. It's pretty easy to make, and it's a good weekend project. But don't think it just stays still. It moves. So here you can see we have our BB-8 droid, and he's already starting to take shape. I've just gotten a styrofoam ball. I believe it's 10 centimeters uh, in diameter, or about 4 inches. And the head is... A little over two inches, you can just get a two inch one or a five centimeter one here in Canada. And something you might want to pay attention to is that the head, the diameter of the dome of the head is actually more than half the diameter of the ball. So that's just something that you got to look out for. Now I just painted these with some liquid latex and then some black acrylic paint just to get them ready for the white because if you do a light coat of white it looks like weathering. Also, if you're wondering about this uh, skirt, I just threw it together with some craft foam reinforced with some hot glue. It's pretty simple. So now we just want to give this a fairly light coat of, of white acrylic paint. And if it's too light, then I'll just apply another one. And you'll see what I mean when I say like a weathered texture. And also something quick before we get onto the painting, I've cut out this section. This is actually going to be for his eye, his larger eye and his smaller eye, which in this case I want to light up. So I'm going to be using these rave fingers. I found these at the dollar store and they actually come with batteries in them already. You can see how that lights up. And I've actually used my X-Acto to shave away as much of the styrofoam as I can and then I've sanded it down with some sandpaper. And if you can just barely see, you can wedge it in there. Turn it on and now you have a light there. And I'm kind of glad that the whole thing isn't there because that would be way too much light. And then I'll just put something there and put like a piece of black paper. And then I'll put in a red light and cut a tiny hole in the eye for that light to shine through. You don't have to do this, but I feel that it adds a lot more character. And something that lights up always just looks awesome. So that's what I'll be doing. So here you can see the ball has been painted. And from that just that one light coat of white, it's really got a nice weathered texture. I'm just going to let that dry for a little bit more. But onto the head, I've put a small piece of black flannel. Here, I'll bring you closer. I've put a little piece of black flannel in there just to divide the two pieces bits of light. And I'm using two lights. This one's green, and I figured out a way to turn it red. So if I turn that on, you can see that little bit of red there and of course I'm going to paint around to get rid of all that green. The blue is a blue one so if I turn that on you can see it glows if you can even focus on this you can see it glows a nice blue and this is going to be perfect to pop onto this head over here and as you can see that works quite well. So now we're going to want to start by adding the details and I'm just going to start off with the dome so let's get on that. So for the eye, I've gotten one of those little, almost like Lego R2-D2 heads, and I've sanded it down like crazy until there's no stud on the top, and I've also sanded the bottom. This was actually meant for a custom Lego BB-8 droid I was working on, but now i found a use for it for the lens for this BB-8. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to get this plastic, which a hot glue gun came in, and it's a really thin plastic, it's like what action figures come in. You could probably also use transparency, like for an overhead projector. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this, put it down, heat up this plastic with a heat gun, I'll cut it into a smaller piece, press it down, and use something like a key ring to press around it to make sure I get the details. Now with something this small, this is definitely thick enough, but if you want to make a full-size one, of course, like, I'm going to make a full-size one probably, and I'm going to be using a much thicker plastic. So let's see how that goes. So here you can see we have the head and uh, my hands covered in paint but here we have the head and of course I'll bring you in close for this here you can see I've actually put in some details around that little red light so when I turn this on yeah you have a nice tiny little red light just like it is seen in the trailer and this is the lens that I made it actually turned out pretty good it has a big thing there but I don't think I can really fix that too easily and also I was gonna make this guy battle damage so you know I'll just add some battle damage there as if that's what happened. And uh, you can see this fits very, very well over that area and really makes it look just like the one from the film. But there's one problem. It's that this one, the viewfinder, whatever you want to call it, also has to be lit up. So that one, I think I'm actually going to be using this hot glue stick. Because if I turn this on and I put this up to it, 
it bounces light really nice. It probably looks quite purple on camera, but in real life it's actually uh, like a really deep blue. And as you can see, that illuminates the rod quite well. So I'm probably going to cut this down, maybe shape it with the uh, hot glue gun or maybe my soldering iron with uh, a really old bit so that I don't like mess up my soldering iron tip. But yeah, I think that'll be fine. As you can see, it illuminates perfectly. So I'll get back to you once I'm all done that. So I've actually opted, opted for something even easier than that. I got an LED, clipped off the wires, sanded it down on all sides to make it a little bit foggy and make it bounce light better. And uh, when I put this in here on top of the other LED, it actually, if I can get that in there, it lights up pretty good. And I can't see a problem with this at all. In fact, it, it works perfectly. And it lights up in the exact way that the one does in real life. And of course, it barely lights up at all in real life, so... I'm kind of doing some overkill here. And for the eye, the big eye piece, we're going to want to get some water and some black acrylic paint. Uh, mix them up. Uh, you're going to want to put a lot of water in it. Put it inside this, brush the insides, do a couple layers. Leave it on a piece of craft foam or pretty much anything that you're willing to get dirty for maybe an hour. And then once you take it off, it'll look fine. But for mine, for the sake of mine being easy and quick, I'm just going to use a Sharpie. I'm just going to color in the inside, and that'll give me my tinted look. So, here's the head. It's coming out amazing. If I turn these two lights on, you'll be able to see that eye lights up perfectly. And here's our cute little lens. If you can see, I popped that on. It's very hard to see, but there is a red light in there. It's just because of the blue one. And uh, it's hardly noticeable anyway, but if somebody ends up seeing it, I'm glad they saw it. So this is the BB-8 droid as it stands right now. Of course there's some more, a lot more work to go, but I'm very happy with how it's turning out, like... <whistles> something like that. But I'm really happy with how this guy's turning out. He's really, he's really coming together. And uh, we're gonna just gonna, oh! We're gonna glue these pieces on so then they don't fall off like that. And then we're gonna work on all of those fancy little details. So, I have spent about 20 minutes marking out this ball. It took me quite a while, uh, believe it or not, just to find a cup that was the right size. I ended up using this one, traced it, traced an inner circle, and then for all these little details, I used a little piece of styrene to trace on there, and just to make sure it all looks good. Uh, there are six circles, so you gotta keep that in mind. So I think I'm just gonna paint these uh, orange really quick, and uh, then we can get into the silver details. So here you can see I've painted the entire ball. If you're wondering why it's smeared in some areas, that was on purpose. Because I want to make this look kind of like the paint is chipping off after a little while. So this is what I have right now. Now we're going to get onto the silver details. And for those, I'm hoping to use some cereal box cardboard. But before we even do that, this head is just plain white. That's, that's just not right. We gotta make this. We need to add all the details and make it look a lot better than just this. So let's get on that. So I've been hard at work making all of these different pieces. M most of them I'm cutting out of, of the piece of cardboard that I've painted ahead of time. This makes it so I don't have to paint them. Also, the edges are so thin, so you don't really have to bother painting those. That's just something you should know. And uh, a lot of these are quite complex, so I don't think I can really help you guys too much on these. But they're pretty easy to figure out, to be honest. This is like the Captain America shield build. You pull it tight and it gives it that curvature. And I'm just going to start painting these and applying these. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, so I might not film a lot of it. Uh, the, my the next uh, scene, or whatever you guys see, might just be this all finished. I don't know. Hopefully I'll be able to film it halfway through. So, see you then. So, here you can see that quite a lot has happened at BB-8 here. I've done all the detailing on the head, include, including even making uh, like the ring that's around the eye. Because I really want this thing to be quite detailed. And I've just started getting tweezers and getting rid of all the little bits of hot glue. But, as you may know, in each and every of these orange pieces, there's silver details. And for those, I have this. If I can bring you close in here, while well, actually focusing on this. Uh, this is an image I have just here on my iPod, and uh, it's of a, like an origami BB-8. But lucky for me, they took a picture of the Sphero one of every one of the faces. So I can now use that 
to paint on these details, each and every one. The only problem that I think they ran into is there's there's supposed to be six, but one of them faces the if there's a table and you put the origami down, one of them just faces the table, so I guess that's why they skipped out on it. So there's only five here, so I think I already know what the fifth one is. It's basically just like this one, except instead of having three of these things, it has two. So here's the ball, and I've based out every single shape, and I'll give you a couple like close-up freeze frames at the end of this, but... For the most part, this is pretty much done. I just have to paint the silver, and I'm actually thinking about going over all of these with this marker again. Because of course these lines are going to be painted over, but I'm thinking this just might be just good enough. If it's not, I'll use a paint pen, but I think it's fine for now. So now I'll give you those awesome slow motion fleece frames. So here's one of them. This is the next. This is the next. This is the next. This is the next after that. And this is the next after that. They're pretty rough drawings, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's so tiny, if you make a little mistake, it's, it's somewhat okay. So as you can see here, BB-8 is basically done, and my hands are covered in paint. Aside from that fact though, I'm pretty happy with how this BB-8 turned out, especially with my lack of reference photos for the back of the head. But onto the ball, I do like it how it looks very worn and used, but it, this whole thing looks too new almost. That's why there's a lot of hot glue messes everywhere. Those are purposeful. I would put the panels on, then get a toothpick, put it into the nozzle of the glue gun, and apply it to make it look like dirt. Now it's time for weathering. So as for the weathering, all you're going to need is a really rough brush and one that absorbs water well. I use these ones that are made from dried grass. They work pretty good. You're also going to need an array of colors. I'm using a mustard, a dark brown, uh, kind of like a mahogany type color, and a black. And what you basically want to do is you want to get a little bit of water on the one that doesn't hold a lot. You want to put it near the paint, get a very small amount of the paint, and smear it in the areas in between pieces, underneath pieces if you have anything like that, and you just want to get it all in there. Now, here's the part where you have to do it right away. Get a toilet paper, piece of toilet paper or a paper towel and wipe it off. This will leave it to kind of stay in those recesses, but not on the uh, elevated areas. This is what gives it the look of dirt. It's the act of wiping off as much as you can. Now, for the ball here, you kind of want to do the same thing, except you'll want it to be watered down a lot more, since this whole thing is smooth, except for your little under undercuts and little details that you might add. In fact, I got sandpaper and I got a screwdriver and I stabbed this, so every once in a while there's just a massive gash. That's what I was going for. I wanted a really beaten up look. And it's the act of wiping it off as much as you can that really gives it that dirty look. Here, after just one pass of one color of weathering, you can see how much depth it adds to it and how much realism it adds to it, as if this thing has been rolling around in the desert. You'll want to do several other colors to give it more of that depth. And I'll just show you right now. It just makes it look so much better, the fact that it's not perfect and it's dirty. It just adds so much more realism and makes it look just like the one from the film. In fact, before I cut this, I'll just add one thing. In the film, there's a scene where he explodes. He doesn't explode, but an explosion happens near him, and he goes flying and his head pops off while well, he's flying in the air. So I'm trying to go for that weatherization, as I like to call it. So here we are on the ground with the BB-8 after it's been weathered, and it looks amazing. The weathering really adds a lot of depth to it than it just being all white and shiny and brand new, kind of like the Sphero one. In fact, I know a lot of people don't actually like the Sphero one because it's too shiny, slick, and new. And in the film, an explosion happens and he goes flying and his head falls off right in, right in frame. So it's really all up to your personal preference. If you want to make this perfect, by all means, go ahead with that. There are templates down below. Uh, it's one template and it actually is an origami bit. It only has five of these faces, but this is the sixth face. It's a very simple one. It's basically, uh, I think it's number three. 
and it's just with three, but it has two, and they're a little bit shorter. And those were just hand drawn by me really quick. Uh, the head and the ball are obviously styrofoam balls. I got the bigger styrofoam ball at the dollar store. You could obviously get this at Michael's in much larger sizes. Definitely much larger sizes, but Michael's is actually quite far away from my home, so I don't like straining somebody to drive me there. Also, for these thin details, you don't even have to use cereal box cardboard. You could probably even get away with using cardstock, paper, even like clear transparent sheets. Just anything that you can cut into the shape and glue down. And for the weathering paints, I just use some regular acrylic, but you could also use oil-based paints. Those really look like grease, because they basically are. And there's just a million ways that you could take this in your own direction. In fact, I was actually thinking about making a mold of the head. I tried making a mold, a two-part mold with a plaster uh, mother mold, and uh, casting this out of some Smoothcast 325 just to make it lighter and easier to sand and perfect. It's really all up to you. And uh, just something quick, if you guys want me to make a specific tutorial for something specific from a movie or a video game or anything, let me know in the comments down below. And if you want me to make you anything off a of commission, then go to this right here. This is my new official business card with my new official uh, logo. It'll be put up on YouTube in a little while, hopefully, uh, if they accept it. And yeah, so that's my email for commissions. And now back to BB-8, uh, this is probably one of the longer prop builds, even compared to the arrow bow, which I have just sitting just right over here. Uh, this one took me five or six hours, so it's definitely a weekend project for some of you guys out there. But again, I would highly recommend this. This was really, really fun to make, and it's just so iconic from the film. I play with this thing all the time. In fact, I'm trying to work out a gimbal out of some Legos that holds the ball and allows it to rotate, but also holds the head just a little bit above it to make it look like it's staying on top. And if you didn't already know, I am going to be making a full-size version of this in a full tutorial series. The only problem is I'm working out how to do it with a uh, very low budget. Uh, but I have some creative ways about making the ball out of some foam core. So I will see you with next week's tutorial, which is probably going to be the Daredevil cowl tutorial. And um, seriously, leave me a comment down below letting me know what you guys want to see me make. I'd be happy to answer your call and help you guys out. Bye. And just for the people in the comments that think that this BB-8 doesn't do anything at all, check this out.